So when I chat with my friends with my similar age, who many of them just graduated and are working now, I hear a lot of complaints about their work. They complain about their harsh boss, they complain about the long working hour, they complain about the heavy workload. And so when they're working, they spend half of the time working and the other half of their time on JobsDB. So literally, their boss just hired them to search for jobs. So, so I think that I am very, very, very lucky to be able to do what I love and wake up every day very excited about what I'm going to do today. And this is a picture taken from my laboratory that shows the technology we are de developing to improve the, the quality of omega-3 fatty acids. And I think that being able to do what you love is very important not just for your own happiness, but for the whole human society. And I will explain, I will explain that in a biological point of view. It's quite strange that my biology professor is not talking about biology, but I'm right. It's the first step to challenge conformity. <laughs> so there is a very uh, interesting and important theory in biology called evolution. <laughs> it was from Charles Darwin back in the 18th century that explains how life originated from a very simple organism and improves and transform over time and become who we are, the dog and cats, you and me. There are a few core ideas of this uh, theory that I want to share with you. First, it states that every, in, in a population, every individual is a little bit different because of natural mutations. So taking, take a population of deer as, deer as example, we look into the, the length of their neck, the, the, their length will be different. And the number of traits will follow a normal distribution. That means most of them will tend to be normal, tend to have the length of their neck close to the average, but a minority of them will be either very short or very long. And a magical thing happens here. That the, net, that the nature selects for the outlying traits because they get higher chance to adapt to changes in the environment. So in this case, the deer of longer neck lengths are able to eat high hang leaves when other foods are scarce, are scarce so that they get a high chance of survival, they get a high chance of breeding, so they start to dominate the population and the species evolves. Evolution is so important because it continuously improves the productivity of life and makes the world a better place. But sadly, in human society, there is one thing against, against evolution, preventing us to improve. That is expectation from others. Expectations are generated from collective norms in every aspect of your life. For example, how much you should earn, what education you should get, and in Hong Kong, in what age should you buy a property? <laughs> this is what I call the ordinarily quite good projection of oneself. Because once you're within it, you feel safe, you're with the majority, and you think that you're ordinary, but you're quite good. Many people try very hard to squeeze themselves into others' expectations, being what others think that they should be instead of being themselves. And, there, and th that is a very sad thing, because they seem to forget what evolution has taught us, that what we should treasure, what is beautiful, is the outlying regions. These are the unique traits of you, these are unique char characteristics of you that make you stand out from the population and often make you successful. So some of the greatest biologists prove that not with experiments, but with their own life experience. So Greg Mendel is the father of genetics. We were taught in high school how his three laws of inheritance shaped the modern genetics, but a very few people know about his life. Mendel was raised in a very poor family, so in order to get better education and a better life, he was sent to the church and trained to be a priest and teacher, which was regarded as a an ordinarily quite good job at that time because the salary is okay, the job is stable. So after some hard work, he took the, the test to become a certified teacher and he failed in the oral test. But never mind, he didn't, he, didn't regret, he didn't regret and didn't give up. He 
He then went to the University of Vienna and tried to get a diploma in education again. So after some, good, after some hard work, guess what? He failed in the oral, get, oral test again. His teacher said that he lacks the insight and knowledge to become a teacher. Oh, what a harsh comment, but it is really clear that Mendel's oral teaching skill is down here. Sorry to say that, Mendel. <laughs> so after this failure, he kept himself in the, in the garden of the church and did what he long wanted to do, the study of, in, of inheritance. He planted, breeded, and analyzed 28,000 plants and finally came up with three laws of inheritance that changed how the world viewed genetics. To do this, it takes this amount of curiosity in science, very great deal of systematic analysis, and unbelievable patience. Because imagine, 28,000 plants, I even feel bored helping my mom to water her cactus. <laughs> But it was so great that Mendel finally embraced what, her, what his true uniqueness is and did it for us so that doctors now can predict your child of having inherited diseases from the parents. So in order to be successful, we need to embrace our own uniqueness. But the problem is, do we really know what your uniqueness is? Do you, can, have you found your unique strength yet? If your answer is no, please don't worry, because you are not alone. In my generation, I found that many people cannot find, cannot find their true calling. They cannot find their true uniqueness. When I asked my friends, if you have all the money you need, you don't have to worry about other things, what do you love to do? What is your dream? Many of them cannot give a solid answer, and it is because Expectations were laid on us very heavily when, since we were very young. So people talk about winning at a starting line, right? And some people even talk about winning before the magical moment. So as soon as we learned how to walk, we were arranged with different interest classes. And in primary school, we need to study well in the regular subjects. Don't forget to learn a musical instrument because it gets you a better chance to go into a good secondary school. And in secondary school, when we are choosing the subjects, choosing our elective subjects, we are advised to choose the ones that ensure you can get better mark in the university entrance exam. So visual arts, no. Religious studies, screw it. <laughs> so what happens when we get to university? We are again advised to choose, a, choose the right major. What is the right major? The right major is, is what ensures you get a, a good job, and you get a stable job. So all are planted, and we are left with no space to explore our own uniqueness. Have you ever wondered why there were so many geniuses at the past? Take Mozart. His father discovered that he is very talented in music at the age of four, and after that he spends all of his life uh, studying the music, composing, and playing masterpieces. Well, imagine what would it become if Mozart was forced to s study the subjects, take mandatory exams, get a good-looking degree. Then we may, may have lost many of the masterpieces. So, that's important. We cannot follow, follow what others, just plainly follow what others teach us to do. I truly think that we have as many talents as we had in the past, but the growing environment just didn't favor us to find them. In such a directed and planned education system, it is quite hard to break, totally break free, but we can still make some changes. What we can do is to keep our minds open to possibilities and keep finding our uniqueness. For example, if you are studying uh, accounting, science, or something like that, but you don't feel that it's your true calling, you don't think that it's your unique strength, then don't get to think that you're already bound on that career path. Keep your mind open to different possibilities and keep looking for your uniqueness. As Steve Jobs put it, keep looking, don't settle. So how about after we have found our uniqueness, then we face yet another problem. We have fears. We have fears of embracing it. We, we are fear of making mistakes. 
uh, by not following what others expect us to do. But in, uh, but in many cases, that fear is not necessary. And if we learn to how to live with, the, live with the mistakes, it can even turn into great success. So this guy is a professor in microbiology. He's known to have a messy, untidy laboratory. At this aspect, I totally don't lose to him. So anyway, in one summer, he went to vacation with his family and just left all of his bacterial samples at the corner of his bench. Holiday mood, we all know that, right? So after he come back one month later, he discovered something bad. He found that one of his petri dishes is contaminated with fungi. Let me walk you through this a bit. The, the tiny round spots up there are the bacteria that uh, he, he wanted to grow. And the last white patch here is the fungi, the contamination. That can be a very bad mistake for a microbiologist because it can ruin a whole month's work. Your sample is just destroyed. But he managed to turn this mistake into a miracle because he found that, well, it's interesting that the bacteria cannot grow near the fungi contamination. You see that they get smaller and smaller and disappearing around the fungi. So after some investigations, he found that the fungi produces a substance that kills the bacteria, and he later named it penicillin, which is the very first antibiotics discovered in the world and saved millions of lives. The name of this man is Alexander Fleming, and this discovery won him a Nobel, Nobel Prize. So if you, if you ask me, do I fear of making mistakes in my own work? Surely I do. It's especially heavy when you have a team relying on you, and you need to be responsible for the investors of your company. But instead of fearing of making mistakes, I am more fear of not doing it. Because life is too short, just living under others' expectations. So I want to end this by asking you all a question. People love to ask, what is your dream? What do you love to do? But instead, I want to ask you, if you stop doing what you're doing now, if you stop doing what you're doing now, what would the world lose? If the answer is simply that the world would pretty much be the same, it won't change, then probably you are not doing the right thing and you should keep looking for your unique strength. Because I truly believe that by finding your unique strength and working on that, everyone can create huge impacts and change the world. And that's how the future human society evolves. Thank you.